In this final lecture, I want to briefly contrast the way that classical and evolutionary medicine look at issues. Evolutionary insights are only helpful some of the time. It doesn't replace earlier approaches. Evolutionary medicine complements them by providing additional insights. These insights are currently more important for the clinical treatment of infectious disease, cancer, and autoimmune disease than they are for many other conditions. The two ways of looking at the world make different basic assumptions. Evolutionary medicine looks at patients not as machines who bro whose broken parts can be replaced if broken, and it doesn't look at, at pathogens as machines that can be disabled by breaking their parts without having other consequences. Both patients and pathogens are bundles of trade-offs in which it's impossible to change one thing without also changing something else. Because evolution has already greatly improved fitness in the face of trade-offs and constraints, changing those trade-offs is often costly. This doesn't mean we should not treat, of course we should treat, but it does mean that we need heightened awareness about the potential negative consequences of treatment. Another way of looking at the world that is not part of classical medicine is that of conflict, and evolutionary conflicts are involved in some diseases. For example, it has not been standard to think of mother and fetus as in conflict over maternal investment or of infant behavior as modulated by conflict of maternal and paternal interests. Evolutionary conflict theory has remodeled our views of family health in very fundamental ways. As we better understand the mechanisms that mediate those effects, we should be able to develop novel treatments for diseases of pregnancy and perhaps of some mental disorders. We also gain great insight from mismatch. And here the important insights could lead to novel treatments for allergies, asthma, autoimmune disease, and also to use our understanding of the changes that we've experienced in modern environments to treat obesity, type 2 diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. So in conclusion, it would be foolish to displace fascinating and useful cell and molecular science to make way for evolutionary insights. Instead, we need to connect the insights from evolutionary biology to insights from molecular and cell science to produce new interdisciplinary research that yields integrated knowledge that's reliable, exciting, general, and useful. It will reduce suffering, and it will save lives.